If you have the cameras from that time, you can in some way experience what it was like to be a photographer in that time, and that's living history. I am David Silver. I collect antique and vintage cameras. I've always had a fascination with the mid-century modern uh, aesthetic, the clean lines and the, the way form and function come together. And the cameras from that period reflect that. And I have about 200 of them now. This is a Brownie Hawkeye camera that was introduced by Kodak right around 1950. There's something about it that tells you it's modern. It, it, it makes an expression. It's a fabulous little camera. These are all Savoy cameras. Very simple. Box cameras. You look, you shoot. Nothing to it. I was only 16 years old and my father got me started by handing me my grandfather's Kodak camera. Now, this is the camera that started it for me. It's a 3A folding pocket Kodak and it's a uh, hundred years old and my dad had used it during high school himself and he said now it's yours now you can be a camera collector too and he was right I've been collecting cameras ever since all the work that's been done in recording the history of photography tends to ignore the technology and you see that there is a connection between uh, what was happening with the evolution of the camera and with how people saw the world and how they were able to record it. There was a time early on in photography where you almost had to have a chemistry degree to understand how to do it. It was a messy, poisonous, dangerous process and it was very expensive. What happened in the 1880s, George Eastman, the guy who invented the Kodak, came along and said, I can make film that anybody can use. And you can double the fun of any day's outing with a brownie camera by Kodak. George Eastman found a way to create a camera that would hold an enormous roll of film that could take up to 100 pictures. You press the button, we do the rest. That was the Kodak slogan. That was the beginning of photography being accessible to everybody. So I love that period. And at one point, I had over 2,000 cameras, beautiful wood and brass and red bellows and uh, just gorgeous cameras from that era that were built by craftsmen, piece by piece. The newest, smartest way to take color slides is with a stylish Kodak Signet 40 camera. You'll wear it proudly everywhere you go. By about 1905, uh, seriously, any kind of camera you can imagine was actually invented by that point. You had different kinds of box cameras and different kinds of collapsible bellows cameras, but you also saw the first uh, single lens reflex cameras and the first twin lens reflex cameras and mechanical marbles that nobody had seen before. When you get deeper into the 20th century, you have 35 millimeter cameras and you have small cameras you can slip in your pocket and take on a vacation with you. Give it a little quick clean. Now, it's very important if you're going to be a mid-century modern camera collector that you have to have a mid-century modern cat. So this is Tigger. He's my mid-century modern cat. Huh, baby? Good boy. About 20 years ago, I decided that um, I didn't like my job. I had been a civil servant for about 15 years and I was looking to do something different. And in 1998, I decided this is it. So I did start a business as a dealer in antique and vintage cameras, but I miss the collecting. Now that I'm into my later phase of collecting, I don't keep the ones that are too valuable. I don't keep the ones that represent income for me because that's my job. Some people might think it's an odd sort of segue to go from beautiful wooden brass antiques to simple plastic cameras, but when you're a collector, you have an itch. You have to scratch it. Part of the joy of collecting is the treasure hunt. The treasure hunt. The collector in me would do crazy things, travel literally 3,000 miles to get that one item I really wanted. Some people will ask a collector, what's your end game? Inevitably, what do you hope for? When you're gone, do you just want to be known as some, some guy who collected cameras or is there something more involved here? I'm putting together the book on the evolution of the camera. 
it'll be a first, but somebody needs to write that book. I hope that becomes the go-to resource for people who want to understand the evolution of the technology of photography. We'll see.